Welcome to our first Atheist Republic meeting. Yes, can every indeed. Okay, good. Everyone can hear me? Fantastic. I see Who? I see agnostic agnostic as well. It's very Hello, cool everyone. username. Hi everyone. All right, so let's just jump into it. So uh, for those of you who don't know, the first thing we're always going to uh, talk about in, in these meetings uh, is going to be uh, the specific case that we want to highlight, right? Um, and today, um, Ali is going to tell us a little bit about Sohail Arabi, which is a political prisoner uh, in Iran for insulting uh, Prophet Muhammad. Um, he so Ali will go over that, uh, but just let you guys know before we go to the details of this case. Uh, this is just for us to analyze the case and see what Atheist Republic and Atheist Republic members, uh, as a and the Atheist Republic community, uh, can do about each specific case. And we will go, um, after Ali explains the case. I will talk to you about some ideas uh, with regards to what we're going to do and how we are going to use our resources to uh, try to help with this case. But just because we're talking about the case, it doesn't mean that this is going to be the case that we are going to be picking. Uh, I am right now in, in touch with um, what they used to be called International Humanist and Ethical Union. They changed their name now to, I think, Humanists International. They are, they are the organization that were responsible for um, helping Atheist Republic. They are one of the only human rights human rights groups out there that do care about atheists, apparently. Uh, but I'm going to rejoin the call camera. Uh, yeah, no worries. Um, by the way, just to let you know, when you write something in the chat, it shows up in the screen, which is I hope it's okay. Um, so we are in touch with the human rights group responsible for bringing attention to this case. Um, just, just so that we make sure that we understand the case, uh, well, but Ali, uh, go ahead and talk to, talk to us a little bit about Sahil Arabi. Yeah. So Sahil Arabi, um, is 34 years old now. Uh, he's been in prison since 2013. Um, he was imprisoned, of course, for insulting um, the Islamic religion uh, through his blogs. He's a photographer who has a wife and a daughter. Um, so he was originally sentenced to death in Iran for his statements um, insulting Islam. And since then, a lot has gone on. So Amnesty International got involved, put a lot of pressure on the government, who turned his sentence away from the death penalty into seven and a half years. Um, however, he, the death penalty is still hanging over his head because what he has to do um, is when he's released from prison, he's going to be given two years to uh, prove to the courts that he is a good Muslim, that he's apologetic for everything he's done. Um, and the problem with this is, is they keep tacking on new charges for more people that feel insulted for what, for what he's done, right? So uh, it went from the death penalty to seven and a half years in prison to here's three more years in prison because you've you've insulted our leaders, you've insulted people uh, in our community. Here's more, here's more, here's more. And during all this time that he's in prison, he is getting beaten by guards. Um, he is, uh, it, things have gotten so dire for him that he's written a will to send to his wife and his daughter. He's written two letters that were kind of taken as suicidal letters uh, to his family, letting them know that he can't take anymore. This is goodbye. Um, this man has suffered and endured so much. Uh, during this time that he doesn't even think he's going to make it. He thinks that the time that he's serving right now is actually his death sentence. He so thinks I, that he's going to die. Ali, I don't understand. His sentence was uh, reduced to, uh, in 2015, his sentence was reduced to two years and studying theology, but that was 2015, and now he's still in prison and it's 2019. I don't understand right. how the math works. Yeah, they uh, they keep they keep tacking on more and more and more years um, as more people show up saying he can't be released. He's insulted uh, Islam, and that was an insult to me. So that's a new charge, right? 
So he's he's in, in, insulted the leaders. He has more time in prison. But the thing is, is the death penalty is still not off the table mm. for Sahil. It's still there because when he gets released, he's going to have to spend two years proving um, that he's sorry for what he did. And he has to convince the court if after those two years, if he ever actually gets released, um, if they don't believe that he's truly repentant for what he's done, uh, the death penalty is back on the table. The problem is that he doesn't, he, this guy is, uh, I don't know what, what you can call it. It seems like he's a... Uh he's very brave and he doesn't shut up even when he's jailed. Like I, I'm very, I'm at awe with activists in Iran, atheist activists in Iran, just to, you know, in Iran and Saudi Arabia and other countries. But this guy, even not, he's not just in Iran while he's in prison, while his own case is being evaluated, he decides to go on hunger strike for the case of some other activists, not for his own, while he's in this level of shit and people are trying to see if he could reduce his sentence or not, he decides to take on someone else's case because they're in prison and he goes on hunger strikes. And this is a case that is not getting that much attention. But instead of begging the world to bring more attention to his case, he's using his case to bring attention to someone else's case while he's in jail. I don't. Uh, this guy. This guy deserves a lot of respect. But but somebody wanted to say something in the in the group chat. Uh, anybody? I heard somebody wanted to say something. Did I make a mistake? If anyone wants to add anything, just mention it in the live and um, type something so that I know that you want to say something. Okay. So Ali, did you? He wrote a letter to his daughter and his wife. Do you want to quickly read that, sir? Um, let me see if I can pull it up. Sorry, I didn't have that uh, here. Yeah. I sent it to you. Okay. Yeah, I'll bring it up as well. All right. Um, actually, please forgive me. That I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, saying so long life, my dear Nasaran. His, that's his wife. Believe me that I did what I could do to build a new life, but please tell uh, Rojana, that's his daughter, that her father was jailed because of his ideas. I loved you both, and now that I am writing uh, my will, I have no wealth to leave you, uh, to leave to you. Please forgive me that I am leaving you alone, but I've been in prison for 1,388 days. And the last, the the last eight days have been intolerable. So he wrote this when he thought that he's, he can't take it, it anymore. When he was on hunger strike, they actually they start, went to his prison cell and they started beating him. Uh, they beat they uh, they beat him so much that he almost died, and they had to take him to, to get him to eat something, and they had to take him to the hospital to the emergency room. And apparently there was some damage to his brain when th when this happened. But th this case is getting such l low attention that even I'm looking at the sources that is used for this, the sources are actually in Persian. Like I get, I, I can read the sources, but this this is getting so, so less attention that the latest news on this hasn't even been translated to English. Like the last article on this, the last main article was this was in 2015. The latest updates regarding his be, him being beat up in prison, him being tortured in prison, those the, the more recent one, which is the last one I'm seeing in Persian, was from two years ago. Uh, they are only in Persian. They have nobody even no one major hasn't even picked it up to 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 report this in English. That's how much that's how low of an attention this this is getting. So this is that's why we think this is a uh, good case to pick up. We give, there are many cases, by the way, that we could pick up. But the reason why I originally thought about this one was because for, uh, it's not getting much attention, uh, and it is a, a, a case of blasphemy. Uh, and I tell you that what, what we plan to, what we plan to do with regards to either this case or any other case. And this is something that you guys I need. Uh, 
you guys to help us decide, right? Because, uh, again, we have these meetings. We're going to have these meetings with our paid members because you guys joined as paid members. You guys are helping us with the resources to do something about this. So I want the, our paid members to every week to have a seat on the table to help us with the case that we're going to be picking and also with the direction with regards to what we're going to do about it. So this is our proposal on what we're going to do about it, right? So right now, Atheist Republic has consulates uh, in many cities around the world. And these are our local groups in every city. And they have events, they get together, they have drinks, they meet each other. What we're going to do with these local consulates uh, is the, the local meetings and gatherings, which is pretty good. But we're now going to try to get the, the admins on each one of these groups to take the consulate into a um, into an activist direction as well, not just gathering and meeting people with each other. What we are, we, what we're going to do with the admins of all of these local consulates is to start ro um, organizing rallies and marches for the case that we are focusing on. And we have to do one case at the time just so that we could be more organized. Like right now, we don't have that many resources, so we have to be very, very fo focused, right? So we're going to hide. We're going to pick the decide which case we're going to dis, uh, highlight and then we're going to go on an organizing mode. We're going to have to leave enough time between uh, after we decide the case, maybe I'm thinking maybe two months, right? So two months, we're going to pick a day that all our consulates are going to, members of our consulates are going to be coming out in protest uh, and, um, you know, with with signs, with everything. And we are, before, before, once we pick a date, we also have to get on the phone with journalists to make sure that this march or this rally is covered. We're going to have our own people that are going to come out with cameras and uh, with cameras and uh, to video and take pictures as well. But we also want to make sure that the local news is picked uh, picked this up. And this is going to be rallies from different consulates in different cities around the world at the same time. And if it's a city that there has an embassy, like, for example, this this is the case in Iran. We want to make sure the cities that have an Iranian embassy, they do this in front of the Iranian embassy. Um, so, yeah, and, and after the protests are done, we're not just going to stop it there. Then we're going to, if, if this does get picked up the news, then we're going to use the news articles to that cover this to start contacting politicians and making and asking them for saying something about this and then doing something about this, right? And then we're going to use these news articles to get human rights organization to bring this to the United Nations as well. Again, there are many, if you if you want to add to that, we're all ears, but this is the plan that we have so far, right? Um, another thing that we have to be very uh, concerned about is that sometimes bringing attention to a case hurts the case rather than helps it, Right? So we have to make sure that before we pick a case, we are in touch with the human rights activists that are working on this case and make sure that we talk to them and see if they endorse this action or not. Right? We want to make sure that we get their green light because they are the experts on the case uh, to see if this is going to help them or if it's going to hurt them. Okay. Um, and again, we don't want to just do something just to feel like we're relevant and we're doing something. We want to actually pick the cases that we think we could make a difference. Any questions or comments on this so far? I think that you bring up a very good point because if we were to get loud and vocal about this without doing our research first, uh, we could possibly put Sahil in a very difficult position. Maybe they are healing from what he said and they're trying to get over it. Um, and then we throw things back in their face and they're like, you know what, here's another five years. Here's another 10 years. Death penalty is back on the table. So that's why it's important that we do, you know, reach out and, and talk to other organizations um, to get this feedback. Right. Uh, anyone wants to mention if this is the case, if they think this is a case that is worth investigating, whether or not we want to highlight or not? Like, do you guys have any opinions on this? Roy, Zane, Jonathan. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm going to leave my camera off because it's going crazy, but as I mentioned before in the forums, right now we don't really have a method for determining or comparing cases, so um, I'm just going to not worry about comparing cases. We'll just go with what you got. If you guys, uh, this is the, the, the case that we need to go after, then, you know, since, we're, since we don't have a methodology, let's just go after that particular case. In the long run, we can figure out the specifics of 
how we want to compare cases to figure out um, well, which Thank you for bringing them. that up because that's something that I can actually start doing. Um, if that's what our members want to see, then that's something that I definitely want to make sure that we provide for you guys. So uh, in the future, we will get a list of people and we'll find a way to compare them for you. Um, maybe make a spreadsheet and kind of show you what's going on um, in different areas. So thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, also, if, if we do have a spreadsheet or comparing, it's good to have a video for each one of these. Cases. So even even if we're not sure if we're going to pick up a case or not, just talking about it in these weekly meetings, then at least like on the spreadsheet, each case would have a video on it as well. So people could just go get a quick update on our last discussion about the case, right? So... Um, Zane, isn't it? Do you see these discussions as part of how, like, what did you, do you have something specific in mind regarding comparing cases with each other? Uh, off the top of my head, I mean, I could make up things arbitrarily, but, um, well, okay, so it, it, it all depends on what your, uh, what, what, what your goal is in, in accomplishing with a lot of these cases, right? So, uh, for example, if you're trying to go the extreme route where um, your priority is uh, people who are in imminent danger, right? Uh, well, then based on that goal, then we determine the comparison criteria, right? Mm. Uh, if your goal is just to bring awareness to cases, okay, well, then the methodology will be completely different. Um, uh, it's, you know, imminent danger might not be the most prominent factor. Instead, we'll look at what you just mentioned earlier, cases that haven't been given um, any kind of coverage, mm. right? So, so you, you got to start off with what, what your goal is, which, and then and work your way backwards from there. The, the problem with uh, coming up with a certain uh, criteria is that these cases are going to be so uh, different that it's gonna hard. It's gonna be hard for us to come up with a, you know, with a, you know, very standard way of, you know, evaluating the whole thing, right? And that's why I think just, uh, just an organic discussion about them, um, all of them, all of the ones that are proposed, and then together we'll decide which one we could, you know, and sometimes our goals might change. Right. Sometimes our goals might be some sometimes with one case, we want to get somebody out of a country and in another case, we, we want the government to reduce a sentence. Right. So because the, our goals might change and the strategy might change, uh, I think the process might have, to, uh, you know, might have to be a little bit more organic rather than a standard process. And also our experience as we keep doing this, like I, I'm thinking our experience is going to also keep building like like we're going to keep uh, keep doing this in after a few years we're going to have like oh this case looks very much like the case that we did one year ago um and we failed that case what did we learn for that from that case that now we could do better right uh or like that case did very well and this is similar so basically i think this is something that has to we build as we keep having more experiences, right? Especially with the events that we, uh, uh, you know, for example, with the rallies and the marches, uh, that's something that uh, organizing and that is something that we're going to build experience. Roy, you keep what you want to say something. Yes, I understand. I understand this question differently. Okay, go I on. understand maybe what, for example, which kind of cases we're going to take. Mm. Uh, I, uh, for example, people that not belong to FA's Republic members and they are in immediate da uh, danger or uh, ethics members that are in danger or what kind of criteria of cases we going we're going to 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 take on our on ourselves what we're going to do with the, the cases of course it's different some one person we want to save from a death sentence and other person we want to get out of the country but uh, about the cases, right. what what kind of them? My, my answer to that was whatever the atheist... Okay, so let, let's get our terminology right. Okay, so we have the Atheist Republic uh, community and then we have the Atheist Republic uh, paid members. Okay, the Atheist Republic community is way bigger. It's like more than 2 million people, right? But then the Atheist Republic paid members are the people that's, uh, that have a seat in these weekly meetings and we decide these together, right? So my understanding was... 
whatever we uh, the Atheist Republic members come and decide together, that's the cases that we pick, right? And this is going to be an uh, argument that we have going to have every week. But then the Atheist Republic community as a whole will take action based on what the Atheist Republic members decide. Um, and But who do we protect is even bigger than outside the Atheist Republic uh, community. That's even a bigger circle. And I think this is going to be any uh, all blasphemers. Um you know, even bit, you know, they don't have to be within our community for us to make a case for them. Yeah, go on. I tell you why I'm asking because I already got a, a request from our uh, FAS Republic. Uh, I don't want to reveal here the name, I will talk uh, about it uh, later. Okay. But they were asking me if, if we're going to do something for them too. About protecting, protecting, and uh, so, so maybe we will take one general case and one of our case, because there are already already a uh, request uh, from uh, our members. One of the pages uh, was a request for me. To me. Right. So one thing that I want to make sure we are uh, we do is that we are very efficient at what did we do, and to do to become very efficient at what we do, we can't. Uh, we have to make sure that we. We uh, we understand that what we are what our role in this is right. This is uh, this is why we have to partner with other organizations that they are already good at what they're doing right. So what but I'm saying but other organization is mostly human rights organizations right. So when it comes to um to the paperwork and also the legal work and also analyzing the situation. We need to partner with or, with organizations like uh, Humanist International or the Secular Rescue uh, or Atheist Refugee in Germany. Those are the organizations we partner up with. Our role, so we we will get their expertise and their advice on the specific on this analyzing the cases specifically. Then what our role is is to make a huge noise about it. Right, that's where we come in. Right, we want to make sure that it's going. What atheist republic roles in these cases is make it harder for both the media and the politicians and other human rights groups that are not focused on atheists make it difficult for all of them to ignore these cases. That's where we come in. But I don't want to make. I, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I don't want to do all the stuff that these other organizations do. I want to partner with them to maximize the efficiency of what we're doing. Does that make sense? So when it comes to, so how does that trans relate to what Roy is saying? When we get a case like this uh, guy that is saying, the first thing we need to do is we need to put that person in touch with one of the our partners uh, and help them to analyze his or her case, his or her, I don't know. Um, so for example, can you tell us what country this person is in? Mexico. Mexico. Yes, there's a huge uh, a pa a page there uh, with a lot of followers. Yeah, yeah. We ha we're big. We I have spoke. we're big in Mexico, but uh, okay. So again, we have to put that person in touch. I don't know. Is Mexico is not a place where AC like ACS are under attack though? Is there? They? I, I was uh, I was uh, actually I was surprised too. Yeah, but so uh, this they is why brought this is... up a lot of uh, uh, question, good question for uh, mm. to say, to say, and I uh, yes. So this yeah, is... yeah go ahead. I, I wanted to remind you guys about the Center for Inquiry, who I also partnered Secular up with. Rescue. That's yes. Gonna... Okay. Yeah. Um, because they actually are the people who help uh, Roy in situations like that. Um, where it's an individual who's coming forward saying things like this. Um, they don't necessarily reach out as far as cases like the one that we we're talking about today. Um, but for individuals like like the person you're talking about, uh, the Center for Inquiry or the Secular Rescue, they are, they are the best. Um, so I definitely wanted to so I can see, give you a lot more resources see, as well. These are the three organizations that I'm focusing on right now. The the Secular Rescue, the uh, the Humanists International, and Atheist Refugees, right? So when it comes to somebody trying to get out of a country, first we need to re refer them to Secular Rescue, okay? And then if Secular Rescue needs 
uh, Atheist Republic's help in making a huge noise about a the case, then that's where we get involved. Uh, when it comes to somebody that is not trying to get out, can't get out, but is in a country, and we're trying to get a, a humanist organization on top of their case because of the jail sentence or death sentence, then that's the Humanist International that we get in, uh, and we partner with them. When it, when it comes to a case of somebody that has already left the country and they're in Europe and they're trying to figure out a way to settle, to find a job, then we will talk to Atheist Refugee with regards to that. So, and I'm hoping that we could partner with these organizations, uh, and I'm hoping that we could increase the portfolio of the companies, organizations that we partner up with, and we understand exactly what Atheist... See, all of these organizations have different roles, and they are experts at dif different things. And Atheist Republic needs to stay in its corner and understand exactly what Atheist Republic's role is role is right given that we are a big uh, uh, we have a big international presence i think naturally our best contribution to this is to uh, you know amplify the voices of the people that are trying to bring attention to this that's our role in all of this does that make sense so uh, as a political movement our main goal is to pay uh, putting lights on the dark places to either to see yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to use that example. Uh, yes, right. Perfect. Does that make sense to everyone else? I, I, so far, you, uh, the people that haven't talked so far, do you guys want to um, ask anything or add anything to this? Any opinions? No? Okay. Sounds good. Say, got, yeah, I just got a quick thing to say. So earlier I was asking for your goal, right? And it seems like you stated it. So correct me if I'm wrong. Your your goal is to basically have a supportive role to make noise for cases. Um, that, and, uh, and if that is to be the role of Atheist Republic, then we can, you know, as I was saying earlier, work backwards from there as far as figuring out a methodology as we go along. Uh, you were also saying that... Um, you would like to have an organic conversation uh, when it comes to each of these cases, which I, I agree with. That's uh, necessary for all the nuances um, that come with each case. Mm. Um, in the long run, though, um, because you also talked about efficiency, right? And in order to have efficiency, the, the, the more methodology you have based on those experiences you talked about us that will gain over time uh, will make things easier in the long run so that... Um, you don't always have to go back to previous cases to find the precedent of what you did last time. Um, so I'm not saying that you need to come up with this methodology right now, because like you said, it's going to you just you kind of you, you kind of wing it at the beginning and then you see what happens. Right. You try different things. You try protests, whatever mm -hmm. strategies you come up with. But eventually, once you figure out what best practices are, you use those best practices to come up with the formal methodology. So. Perfect. Yeah, I agree. OK, yeah. I agree. Yeah, as we keep doing this, we'll keep documenting what's working and what's not working. Perfect. Yeah, basically. Okay, good. Uh, all right, I, I do want to keep these meetings uh, uh, short. Uh, I will give you guys. I, I am having. A, I'm going to have a meeting with um, uh, Humanists International. I keep having to remember what their new name is. Uh, I'm going to have a meeting with them to talk about Sahel Arabi. I will keep you guys updated on what their what their thoughts on this is. I do. I'm not sure. Uh, another case that a lot of people are asking us to bring attention to uh, um, it is Sharif Jabber. Am I pronouncing his name right? Yeah, Sharif Jabber. Um, the the thing with that is that. That that is getting a, I I first thought like well that case is already getting a lot of attention but 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 I don't know if I'm being honest is if if that's true because it's only getting a lot of attention among us atheists it's not getting that much attention outside of the atheist circles right um, do we is that some a case that we want to consider um, or not another problem with that case is that so this is something that we could maybe talk about next week uh, about Sheriff's uh, case. Uh, another problem with that case is that it seems like the more experts I talk to about this, it seems like there are not that much that we could do, but I don't know, maybe if we bring more attention to it, maybe somebody, more people will come up with proposals. Is that, it? do you guys want to have a, the next meeting about Sheriff in Egypt? 
I don't know if you guys know about him. Do you guys know about who this guy is? Yeah, I've heard of him. I don't know about other people, but yeah, I have no problem with that being the next meeting subject matter. All right, let's consider, uh, unless somebody else proposes some other case that we want to highlight, let's consider making the next meeting a bad sheriff. Okay, that's fine. And um, that spreadsheet you mentioned earlier, right? Um, if we do ever get that going, uh, I think that will help us identify a few things that we can use as comparators in the future. Right. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Zane, for um, these are great suggestions. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, uh, ag uh, Gnostic, uh, Agnostic, if you've been trying to speak, I don't know, you mute, you're you muted. So let me uh, let us know if you want to say anything now. And also, yeah. can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Perfect. Sure. Uh, the only thing that I have right now is, you know, this is obviously very traumatic what's going on, not just with the individual that was mentioned earlier, but this is like widespread. This is going on everywhere. This this notion of what I'll pretty much sum up as blasphemy laws. Right. And so, you know, if we're talking about a political movement, I'm just wondering, and I'll, and I'll ask you the, uh, the question, is, is there like a bigger sort of approach or a bigger vision? Because obviously we want to like put the light on these people that are actually suffering. Right. But but we also have to get to the root of the problem. Yes. And I think when you really look at it, it's there's all of these protectionisms built around criticisms of these religious institutions. And, you know, with all due respect to everyone's belief, um, we're, we're having essentially what I refer to as idol worship. Because, because that's essentially where the, these people seem to be taking offense. And I, I think this is a problem that has generated this believer versus unbeliever division that has been prevalent in humanity for a few thousand years now. Right. So this, so. Religious, this religious blasphemy thing that's trying to protect idols, I know Jesus is there, I know Muhammad is there, and this sense of attachment that people are generating with these as i refer to examples or idols um, this is like a global problem now because hundreds of millions of people are, are like dead and what's even more interesting is when you look you know at the the veracity of the text themselves we can prove beyond any reasonable doubt whatsoever that these these scriptures are not actually divinely ordained or sanctioned they're actually man-made we can prove all of this very very easily so every single time we have one of these individuals you know that's been locked up for f almost 1400 days because they criticized honestly a man who's dead this is this is like borderline insanity i don't mean to sound like no you're you know, right but this has to stop this has been going on for thousands of years this believer versus unbeliever division and I would go so far as to say that belief is not a virtue. It's not a virtuous thing to believe something, especially when we know it's not true. And people are suffering as a result. And this has been going on. So, so that, so, sorry to go on to so long. but that No, no, us, no, you're absolutely right. That brings us back to the, the question, what's the bigger vision here? Because if we're going to take a stand against this kind of the blasphemy, you can't criticize our idol, you know, don't criticize Jesus, don't criticize Muhammad, because this is the root of fascism. If you, if you really think about it, this is the root of fascism. You can't criticize this, you can't criticize that, because it hurts our feelings. Do, do we understand how ridiculous it is that this, this man who is locked up now for almost 1,400 days... He's getting more time added on because people are coming up and saying, I'm offended. You, they can keep this person locked up for as long as they want. All someone has to do is come up and say, what he said offended me. Right. So this, what I would say, emotionalism with, associated with these religious idols, the sense of attachment, um, it's, it's wreaking havoc on humanity. And I don't say that lightly, but I don't want to, you know overdo it so to speak right we have a lot of big a lot bigger plans but the thing we want to make sure that we we start with things that we could accomplish um 
as a small movement, right? We we need right. uh, we need to do these small things so that we could grow into a bigger movement. And we have we have so many bigger so many bigger plans that we are even afraid of telling people because people are tell, going to tell us like, yeah, sure, that's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, we have we we are going to go after uh, laws. We are going to go after supporting. We are going to try to. And, I mean, we have re- big dreams, like big dreams. We want political representations in every country. We are, uh, you know, um, the the plans that we have are so pie in the sky big that some of them are ridiculous. And how you know, but yes, we have bigger plans. We do. We do want to make. We do. This is not just going to. To us, this is not just a movement. This is a revolution, but. When we have our first meetings are going to be about stuff that we could achieve with what we have right now. As our membership grows, as our resources grows, we are going to have plans for bigger things to accomplish. Right. I want to, I, yes, yeah. I want to mention that although we are now taking cases and the, and the first action is in here on Skype and uh, after that uh, on the consulate. But uh, we need to remember that uh, in another year, we're going to have an election and uh, the parliament is going to be voted. And then the bigger we be, we get, a bigger we can uh, affect. Uh, so yes, we're building it slowly, but safe. Yeah, and also the reason why we're starting with, these, uh, with picking up cases like this is that we don't, the plans that we have, we don't want to just wait, like we say, like, okay, we need like, uh, you know, 5,000 members to be able to do this. Like, okay, so are we just going to sit around until we have 5,000 members to be able to do these things? No, we're going to get started on working on stuff even before we get there. And these are the smaller things that we could achieve in the, um, we think we might be able to do in the, in, uh, until we get there. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and I apologize for for taking uh, the time. And I no, just want to end. No, you did great. I just, yeah. just want to end with um, fundamentally, this is what the problem is. If I just use um, Muslims as an example, if Muslims believe that the Quran is the perfect word to create the universe, and that's not true, and they're actually trying to do the right thing, which is eradicate all man-made laws from the planet. And installs Sharia. That's what their plan is. If it, if the Quran is not the perfect word, the creative universe, we need to understand they're actually installing man-made laws. Yeah, and they're dis- they're attacking everyone else. And this goes even before Islam, back to Christianity, which is the same problem. And it goes back to, you know, Judaism. So there's there's a really, I think, big opportunity. But as you mentioned, I think we need to start start small and, and and build our way up but but at the same time we also need to be firm when we say you we need to stop with this fascism with this socialism with this i call it shared suffering by the way <laughs> make right. everyone suffer as, as as much as everyone else but you know there are people out there and we know this that really are tired with this assertions that we know are not true so i think if we can keep pushing in that direction, even if we have to start small, I think um, we can pick up a lot of momentum. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for that. That was great. Uh, Jonathan, If did you want to add anything? Or uh, if not, we could... So I, I just have a, a few comments. I don't, I don't think that taking on the goal of we're going to change people's belief that, that they're the Bible is not the word of God, that the Quran is not the word of Muhammad and all these things. I, I, I think those are, we're going after goals of grandeur and we're only going to deflate ourselves. We, we have to think small, but with the ability to grow huge quickly. And uh, the, the questions that come to my mind are, first of all, who is Atheist Republic? Who are we? So we certainly represent all of the atheists that are a part of Atheist Republic. And what do we do? Uh, I'm I'm new to this, so I sort of see Atheist Republic as the voice of the atheists around the world. And perhaps what Atheist Republic can do is to broadcast those voices so that the world can hear the 
I don't know what the right word is, but the horrible things that are being done to atheists around the world and for Atheist Republic to try and stop these things from being repetitive, uh, accepted behaviors. Right. Yeah, I, I want to make it like, you know how it's so t uh, taboo right now to be, uh, I mean, it's still there, but it's still very taboo to be anti-Semitic, right? Um, why, like, p when I say p people get into a lot of trouble when they say something about all Muslims or about something generalized about Christians or if they attack Christians or if they, um, you know, if there's a laws against... Jews in a country. Imagine if there was, if they were hunting down Jews in a country, there would be an international outcry. I want us, but uh, atheists um, going after atheists or going after people that offend people's religious feelings, that just doesn't get the amount, same amount of backlash. And the reason why it doesn't get the same amount of backlash is because there's not that much strong advo atheist advocacy groups out there. There's, there is no political cost. Uh, that people have to pay for going after, to, uh, for mistreating atheists. And we need to be part of that backlash. We need to be part of that political cost. So, so to, to, to make this more, a bit more fair, like I'm not, again, I'm not saying obviously every time I say this, people think like I'm um, trying to say that people uh, that are going after people that mistreat Jews, Christians, and Muslims, uh, that they, it's not that important. Obviously, that should be there. What I'm just saying is that we are behind on this. We don't have as small, as strong of an advocacy groups for atheists, and we need to fill in that gap. Does that make sense? Well, it does. So the question becomes: How do we um, how do we do that, and how do we increase the speed at which we can do that? Right. By by again by. By picking cases that, uh, smaller cases, like you said, uh, that we can make a difference. And by the good thing about Atheist Republic is that we do have presence in many different cities around the world. And the speed is like, I, a lot of people are, the one way we could increase the speed is not by not being too nitpicky. Like a lot of people think that everything has to be perfect for people to go out and have. This is what I say. Even if your city, even if your consulate, if you can get four people out in front of an embassy with a sign and a camera and send us the video, that's the start, right? Like, let's just plan it. Let's just pick a date, make a hashtag, uh, free Sohail. If if we pick this case, get in front of the embassies. Even if there's two or three of you, go in front of the embassy, send us some pictures and videos. Let's get on the phone with reporters. Tell them that this is the day that we're gonna. This is the day that we pick. There's multiple cities that we managed to successfully organize an event. Hey, would you, are you? Even if we can't get reporters, can we at least get a blogger? Can we get a podcaster? Can we get a YouTuber to go show up there and record this and put it on their YouTube channel? So it's just like in in the in the in the for profit world they call it the minimum viable product you don't go for perfection you go with getting things done right and then we'll just build like even if it's small then the next one will just build on that and make it bigger next time make it more organized next time great right, good is that good i think that's where we should end this yeah one. yeah all right all right good guys so um <laughs> all right <laughs> i just got two things to add right quick if you don't mind okay yeah go ahead this would be the last thing if um after this okay then we can end yeah, this right i'll here. make it quick uh earlier you mentioned um you didn't say best practices you said what was the word you used oh, if, if minimal viable product efficiency nah i don't remember the word you used but thank okay. you um basically uh what i was going to say is um uh since all right, that's right. You said you didn't want to reinvent the, the wheel. That's what you right. said. Right. So just um, since there's already organizations that have been around for a minute doing all this, right? So one of the things you can do is uh, you can go to them, ask them for access to their, you know, Google Docs or whatever they're using to document their policies, right? And uh, sometimes you'll find useful things in there that you can implement in Atheist Republic. Uh, that's number one. And number two, um, based on what uh, Jonathan said and uh, Gnostic Agnostic said, right, um, the main issue we're having is 
Um, we all have our individual ideas of what we think this is, right? And in order to clear that up, it'd be easier if you uh, not only said what you wanted as you did earlier, but somehow documented what you wanted, right? Yeah. So on the forum, I posted, uh, uh, you know, somewhat, somewhat of a makeshift drawing of what you said in your initial launch video to try to visualize what you want, right? We don't have to use that. That's just an example. Mm. But if you can come up with something like that, it'll make it much easier for your members to understand what it is you want. And uh, that way, the same questions don't keep coming up about where are we going with this. So I, I think that's that's very good. And um, I mean, I think that what what perhaps really needs to be done is that we need to work on we need to work on uh, putting together some very simple statements of what if, what is our goal? And there's more than one goal. It's our internal goal, our external goal, so forth. But but what I would really like to see is that um, when people see Atheist Republic, they know that it's not just atheists who can join. You can certainly be a religious person and join because what what we're doing is we're we're not we're not picking saying that a religion is bad. We're we're defending someone that if they were your child you would want to do the same thing. If 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 you're Jewish and, and a Muslim is gonna be beheaded because they're an atheist, uh, you know, it it, it we it we need like a one sentence thing of what we do and the fact that anybody can join. You don't have to be an atheist to help support this this cause. Uh, right. So as long as uh, they, so we, they call we call them atheist allies, and these are they, for people to be able to be an atheist ally. They also have to not just be allied to us because they're okay with being us being atheists, but they should also be okay with us being atheists and being anti-religious, anti-religion. Um, and we do have a lot of people like that that are that we disagree with on Islam and Christianity, but they find it's fine. You could talk shit about Islam or Christianity or Judaism as much as you want, and we support your right to do it. Um, and the, the example that I give is that you don't have to be gay to support gay rights. So you don't have to be an atheist to be able to support atheist rights, and um, you don't. You could be a straight person that is part of the gay rights movement, and you could be a gay a gay person that is not part of the gay rights movement. So being an atheist is different from being part of an atheist right movement, uh, and you could be a religious person that is part of the atheist right movement. Yeah, uh, I mean, on your part three, Armin, you you actually get into this a little bit and and the difference between uh being a religious person and uh uh another put it another way uh, a religious person who doesn't care whether you um uh share their religious values or not they're they're happy to get along with you certainly we certainly the organ atheist republic will not work well if we have a catholic person who believes that we must all eat fish on friday but if we have a Catholic person that says, I want to help you, and I don't care whether you are my religion or you believe in my religion or not, I don't preach my religion, that's between mm. me and whatever I believe, but these atrocities that are taking place need to be stopped. Well, then, yeah. I think it's, I mean, I'm an anti-theist, but I, I know I'm not going to, in my lifetime, I'm never going to see religion go away, so I need to figure out how to make my least enemies become my friends. Right. And I, I agree with you on that as long as the condition, the acceptance that we're looking for from religious people is not that I'm OK with you being an atheist. I'm, a, I'm looking for religious people that are saying I'm OK with you being an atheist and also talking shit about my religion. Like that's the level of acceptance that we uh, that we want for people, for for anybody religions. That wants to join our movement. Yeah, I think yeah. we shouldn't. We shouldn't care if somebody wants to pay you thirteen dollars a month to support your organization. We shouldn't <laughs> care whether it's Satan himself. <laughs> yeah, but I'm assuming that somebody is paying our member. They know. I mean, Atheist Republic has been very vocal about against religious views. So I'm assuming that somebody religious that is going to that is going to pay thirteen dollars a month to Atheist Republic. I'm assuming that means that's a huge sign that they're okay with that, right? Right? Because we don't hold back on our views against religion, and we do have a lot of people that are religious, and they say, "Yeah, sure, go ahead." So, we want to encourage that. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. 
If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.